Hi, I'm Crypto Lou and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be taking you through Qcoin, which is a multi cryptocurrency exchange. I hope you enjoyed this video today and if you do then please give me a thumbs up as it really helps me to grow my channel and understand what kind of content that you enjoy. So first up, who are Qcoin? Well basically they are a multi cryptocurrency exchange that are based in Hong Kong. They're pretty good in the fact that they are easy to use for beginners who are buying your first coins. They kind of have a reputation for adopting a lot of the newer coins earlier than some of the other exchanges, which means that you can sometimes get these at a cheaper price. If you're familiar with Binance, it's very similar in the fact that the look and feel is very similar. Also, you'll find that Qcoin also have their own cryptocurrency, which is the KCS token, which means that you'll get discounts on your trades when you actually hold on to the coin. Now, in terms of signing up, I find it pretty easy to do so. All you need to do is fill out your details, confirm your emails and log on. If you have any queries with regards to the sign up process, please feel free to put in the comments below and I'll be happy to help. So with regards to the dashboard, when you first log into your account, you'll find, like I said, very similar to the likes of Binance in the fact that you've got all this kind of marketing and competitions that they have in this top hand section here. Now, if you haven't looked at Binance before, I have done a full review and tutorial of Binance. And what I'll do is I'll put it in the top right hand corner now. So if you'd like to take a look at it, then please feel free to do so. In the top hand section here, you also have any new coins that have been listed on Qcoin. So we can hear that, see here that Polymath Network or Poly has now just been listed on Qcoin. And it also gives you current price movements across the different types of coins that they have listed. So the first thing you want to do when you sign up to any one of these accounts is obviously fund your account. So what you need to do is if you go to assets and then if you go through to deposit. Now, one of the main drawbacks that I see to Qcoin is the fact that it operates on a crypto to crypto basis. So you can't deposit with fiat such as US dollars or euros. And it means that you can't purchase cryptocurrency directly on Qcoin via a credit or debit card or by bank transfer either. So instead, what you have to do is go and purchase your Bitcoin elsewhere, like the likes of GDAX, for example, then send it to your Qcoin account. Now, by default, they always select their Qcoin shares or their KCS token. So just ensure that you are depositing the correct type of currency. So in here, you can see there's lots of different types of currencies that you can deposit with. Now, if, for example, you wanted to deposit with the likes of Bitcoin, what you would do is select the Bitcoin icon. And then you're just confirming the fact that you, that is the type of currency that you're confirming. So click on to confirm. Then what you'll do is you'll be presented with your Bitcoin wallet address. And what you'll need to do is send your funds to this address or use this QR code to actually send your funds across. Now, one thing to be aware of is that it can take some time to get over to the exchange. So just make sure that you're keeping an eye on that transaction. And once you've funded your account, you'll then go to markets. And the different type of markets that are available are Bitcoin, Ethereum, NEO, US dollar Tether, KCS tokens and Bitcoin Cash. You can then view all of the different types of coins that are available. And again, you can search in this top hand section. So if, for example, you are looking at Loki, then what you can do is you can search for that by typing that into that search bar. Then you can simply click on to the ticker pairing. So at this point, it takes you to the exchange. So this is very similar to the likes of Binance or Bitrix or GDAX, where you have your different types of uh, depth charts, you have your order books, you have what's going on in the market, and you can view your open orders and your trade history in here as well. So in that top hand section here, you can see that I my pairing is Loki to Bitcoin. It'll then show me the last price for my Loki coins in Satoshis. Um, so you've got an idea of the last price. You then have the percentage change in um, Bitcoin. You then have the current bid price. You have the ask price. You have the high for your Loki coins. You also have the current low for your Loki coins. And you have an idea of the volume that's exchanged in the last 24 hours. Then with regards to the graph, you can change change the time intervals in here. So if, for example, you want to change that to 30 minutes, what we'll then do is show me the changes between each candlestick. So I've changed that to be 30 minutes now. And if you don't like the kind of candlestick look in terms of these graphs, you can actually go through and change that, for example, to line charts. So it just gives you a little bit of customization within the exchange itself. It's also got a compare tool in here as well, which is pretty good as it gives you an option to compare for different currencies, which not many other different types of exchanges have. Then in terms of the order book, you've obviously in the top hand section here, you've got all the sell orders appearing in red, and then you've got all the buy orders appearing in green. Now, one thing that's pretty good as well about the Qcoin exchange is the fact that they have um, 
two-step authentication built into their system. So before I can actually go through and buy or sell any type of tokens, I actually use to, need to use my two-factor authentication at this stage. So you set that up when you set up your account. So what you're provided with is a six-digit number, which changes um, periodically, and just it gives you that extra level of security when you're using the exchange. And once you've entered in your authentication code, it's then valid for 120 minutes to use within the exchange. So it just means that if you haven't, for example, logged out of your account, after that 120 minutes, no one else will be able to go in and buy and sell or use your credentials. So as you're ready to go through and buy or sell your coins, what you need to be doing is working in this bottom right hand corner here. So there's different types of ways that you can say what price you want to buy at. So you can select the best price. So this is the price that the market is currently going for. And what you can do is simply just select that and it will pre-fill that in there. Then what you would do is type in the amount that you'd like to purchase. Now with regards to their trading fees, these are at 0.1%. And if, for example, you don't want to buy at the best price and you're quite happy for someone to fill your order, what you can do is you can simply type in the amount that you'd like to type into here. Or what you can do is you can then scroll up and down with the numbers and then say, actually, I want to buy it at, you know, five below what's at the current market price. Then you would go through and click on to buy to then complete that purchase. Now, if you are purchasing at the best price, that order will then automatically fill. If, for example, you have defined the price that you would like to buy it at and you've gone slightly below the best price that's out there at the moment, it will then show up in your open orders until that order is then fulfilled. Once it's then filled, it will then show up in your trade history. Then with regards to selling, it works in exactly the same way. So you can sell it at the best price that's out there at the moment. So um, that's at the market price that is known as in different types of exchanges. Or you can put in a fixed price at this section. So you can say, I actually want to sell it at slightly above the best price that's out there at the moment. Then you would just simply type in the amount that you're looking to sell. And then you would click on to sell. But now just take us back to our main screen. And if we go into assets... So the assets overview is where all your cryptocurrencies are stored and where you can then go through and deposit and withdraw. So once you've gone through and you've purchased your cryptocurrencies, they will then appear in this overview in this section here. Now, best security practices are that if you have purchased your coins is that you do not keep them on the exchange as they're far more likely to be at risk and hackers are more likely to want to attack an exchange where there's lots of assets on there. So what you need to do is find a compatible wallet where you can then send your assets across to. Now, one of the safest ways to do that is by sending it to a cold storage device like the likes of a Ledger Nano S. I've actually got a link to that in my summary of my video. So please take a look at that if you want to. So once you're ready to go through and withdraw your tokens, what you need to do is you can obviously search in the top right hand corner here and then click on to withdraw. Then what you need to do is put in the address of where you're sending it to, put in the amount that you're sending, and then you need to use that two-step verification code or your two-factor authentication again in this section, and then click on to confirm. Now, with regards to withdrawing, there is a fee associated to it. It is quite low compared to some exchanges because it's a fixed fee regardless of the amount that you're actually withdrawing. However, the fee will depend on which cryptocurrency you withdraw from. And what I'll do is just quickly show you that on their fees. So they are quite transparent with the different types of withdrawal fees. It lists all the different assets and the fees that you will be paying. There are a couple of free ones in here, like the likes of Neo or Gas, but pretty much everything else you need to pay a withdrawal fee for. So a nice little feature that they have is under this little dollar symbol, they have a quick link to the overview of your assets. So it just gives you the different coins and the amounts that you have available. This again gives you the detail. You can then go through and use the quick link to deposit and also to withdraw. So if you are buying different types of altcoins and you're not quite sure which exchanges support which coins, what you can do is use a site called coinclarity.com and what you would do is just simply type in the type of coin that you're interested in. So if I just type in NEO up here and what it'll do is then tell me the different types of exchanges that support that coin and you can see here that Qcoin is then listed. So that was a very brief overview of the Qcoin exchange. I like the fact that it's pretty easy to use. It's got quite a nice interface and it's pretty good for beginners who are buying their first different types of altcoins. One of the drawbacks for me personally is the fact that you can't actually purchase with Fiat. I know that's very similar again to Binance. I know I keep referencing Binance, but it's so similar. I can't believe it. You know, the fact that they kind of got this reputation for being early adopters for different types of altcoins is really great because you can go through and you can purchase these coins at a cheaper price. So I hope you enjoyed this video today. And if you did, then please give me a like. 
If you have any comments with regards to the Qcoin exchange, then please feel free to put them in the below. And if you want to see more tips, reviews and tutorials, then please hit subscribe. Thanks and I'll see you soon.